everybody and welcome back to our Bible class lessons. I hope that you have been thinking a lot about Moses this week. I know that I have. Baby Moses was such a cool story to learn about. I'm so glad that it's in our Bibles. And today we're going to be talking about Moses again. But this time it's going to be when Moses was a little bit older. Not quite this old, because we're still not talking about those Ten Commandments. We're going to be talking about something a little different, something before then. But before we get into our story, I want to do just what we did last time, which is sing some songs, and then we'll get into our Bible lesson for today. So I want to start off by singing a song about the Bible. You know the song, we sang it last week, and I think that you did a really good job singing it, and you can help me again. The B-I-B-L-E. The B-I-B-L-E, yes, that's the book for me. I stand alone on the word of God. The B-I-B-L-E, the B-I-B-L-E, yes, that's the book for me. I'll read and study and then obey the B-I-B-L-E. I love the Bible because it's God's word. And this is how God talks to us and tells us all the things that we need to know. The Bible is very, very important and it's very, very special. So we need to take really good care of our Bibles. We don't need to draw all over our Bibles and mark over the words. And we don't need to tear the pages or throw our Bibles. We need to be very gentle with our Bibles and read the words so that we can know what God wants for us. Now, the Bible tells us a very important message, and that is that God loves us so much. Let's sing about Jesus loving us. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Now today in our story from the Bible, we're going to be talking about Moses again. And do you remember from last time which books of the Bible that Moses wrote? He wrote the first five books of the Old Testament. What are the first five books of the Old Testament called? The Pentateuch, that's right. Penta means five. And Moses wrote the first five books of the Old Testament, the Pentateuch. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. But I think we can probably say all of the books of the Old Testament. Do you think we can do that? I think we can. Last week we sang a song about it and I think we can probably do that again. I hope that you'll help me. And if you don't know it, I hope that you'll try to learn it so we can know all of the books of the Old Testament. Do you remember how many books are in the Old Testament? There are 39. That's a lot of books and some of the names are really tricky. But let's try together to sing all 39 books of the Old Testament. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1st and 2nd Samuel, 1st and 2nd Kings, 1st and 2nd Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi. Whew, that was 39 books in the Old Testament that we just sang. But today we're going to go all the way toward the beginning to the second book of the Bible. Which one is that? Exodus. You're right. The book of Exodus that Moses wrote, that's a part of the Pentateuch, which is the first five books 
of the Old Testament. So we're going to be talking today from the book of Exodus, and we're not just going to be talking about Moses. We're really going to be talking about God and how great God is. Hmm. I know a song about our God and how great he is. Would you like to sing another song, but this time a song all about God? Please join me if you know this song. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do. The mountains are his, the valleys are his, the stars are his handiwork too. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do. There's a word that I really like to use when, when, I, when I talk about God, but it is a big word but I want to teach it to you so that you can tell your parents all about this big word and they will be so impressed. The word is omnipotent. That's kind of a big word. I don't even know if I can spell it, but I can say it. It's omnipotent. Can you say that? I'll say it and then you say it after me. Omnipotent. Good job. That is a big word that means all powerful. God is all powerful, omnipotent. And that's a really cool word to know about God and how great God is. Now, in our story today, we're going to talk about Moses meeting God in kind of a strange place. Moses, when he grew up, after he was a baby, he grew up as a prince in Egypt because he lived with Pharaoh's daughter. But as he grew and he learned about what it meant to be a Hebrew from his mom, who was his nurse, Jochebed, he saw that the children of Israel, the Hebrews, they were not being treated well by the Egyptians. And one day, Moses saw an Egyptian being really mean to a Hebrew. And Moses did something that he should not have done. Moses killed the Egyptian. And nobody liked that Moses did that. And Moses was very afraid that he was going to get in trouble. And so he ran away. And Moses became a shepherd. And he was a shepherd for a long time. And one day, as an older man, God appeared to Moses in a bush. Now the bush was on fire. But do you know when we light things on fire that it goes on fire, but then it burns up? And if you were to light a tree on fire or to light a bush on fire or even just a little flower, if you were to light it on fire, it would burn up and then there would be ashes. Have you ever seen your parents light a candle? When you light the candle, that wick that they light turns all black and it melts the wax down from the candle because fire is very powerful and it can do a lot of damage and burn things up. But God did something really special with this fire. It was on the bush, but the bush didn't burn up. And so we call it the burning bush. It was burning but nothing was consumed. It didn't destroy the bush. That was a miracle. Only God could do that. But Moses was seeing this bush and then he heard someone calling him, Moses, Moses. And it was God speaking to Moses in the burning bush. And when Moses got close to the bush, God told him to do something. Do you know what God told him to do? 
God told him to take off his shoes because the ground where he was standing was holy. It was holy ground. Now, in our book, Moses needs to take off his shoes because that's what God told him to do. To take off your shoes because this is holy ground. Do you know what the word holy means? Holy means set apart or different, but very special. So God is holy. God is different. God is different than me. God is different than your parents. God is different than we are because God is omnipotent. He is all powerful. And God is so much more powerful than we are. And God knows everything. And God is love. There are so many things about God that are so different than me and you. And God is holy. He is special. And we are supposed to treat God in a very special way. Now, I want to give you a little example of that. I want to show you something. Moses' story made me think about something. It made me think about shoes. Moses was told to take off his shoes because it was holy ground. And so I want to tell you a little story about shoes. First, I have this pair of dirty shoes and smelly shoes. Eh, can I hold them close to you? Because they're kind of smelly. Look at these shoes. They're even torn on the inside. These shoes are yucky. And do you know what I use those shoes for? I use these shoes when I go outside and I have to step in the mud or I have to go out in the grass and get dirty. That's what I use these shoes for. But then I have another pair of shoes. These are my fancy shoes. They have a flower on them and they have high heels. And these are fancy shoes that I wear when I get dressed up and I go to worship. Do you think that I should wear these shoes when I go out in the mud? No, they would get all messed up. And so these shoes are different. They have a different purpose than these shoes. These shoes are good. I need these shoes. I need shoes to wear outside. But I also need shoes to wear when I get dressed up and when I want to be fancy. God told Moses that the ground was holy because God is holy and God is different. And when you and I talk about God, we're supposed to talk about God in a special way and in a different way. And so when we talk about God, we don't talk about him in the same way that we talk about other people. We don't talk about God in just a, a kind of silly way. When we talk about God, we show respect and we're, we're really kind and we're nice and we're serious about God because God is holy and his name is very special. And so we don't want to say God's name when we're not talking to him or talking about him because his name is very special. God is holy. And so I want to sing just a couple of songs about God being holy. And you might know a couple of them. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord our God. Holy, holy. Holy, holy is the Lord our God. God is different. God is holy. Holy Lord, most holy Lord, you alone are worthy of my praise. O oh, holy Lord, most holy Lord, with all of my heart I sing. Great are you, Lord, worthy of praise. Holy and true, great are you, Lord, most 
most holy Lord. Did you know that that's why when we're singing to God in worship or we're praying to God in worship that your parents and your grandparents and the other adults that are around you tell you to not be silly and to be serious and to sing and to close your eyes and to pray because God is holy and God is worthy of our attention and God is worthy of our respect and of our nice words. So when it's time to worship, it's time to be still and to be quiet and think about God and how much you love him. And when it's time to sing, it's time to use our whole big voice to sing praises to God because he is holy. Now, let's go back to the bush. God was talking to Moses in the burning bush. And God told Moses that he had a special job for him. Moses was supposed to go back to Egypt. Now, Moses had left Egypt. Moses did not want to go back to Egypt because he was still afraid because he had killed someone. But God told Moses that he was going to be his very special messenger and that he needed to go back to Egypt. Do you know what Moses did? Moses made excuses because he didn't want to go. Moses said, well, what am I going to do? Who am I going to say sent sent me? I'm not very good at talking. I don't think I should go. And every time that Moses said something about an excuse, God would be very patient with him. And God answered him. And God told him, what's that in your hand? Moses said, a rod, a staff. And God said, throw it on the ground. When he threw it on the ground, do you know what happened? It turned into a snake. And Moses ran away because he was scared of the snake. But when he picked up the rod, which he had to be really brave to pick that up. When he picked up the rod, it was a snake, but he picked it up and it became a staff again. And God said, that's going to be a sign that you can show the Pharaoh when you go and talk to him. And I'm also going to send you with your brother, Aaron, so you'll have someone to go with you. But Moses kept making excuses. And finally, do you know what Moses said? Moses told God to send someone else. And God had been very patient with Moses But God was angry when Moses said to send someone else. Because when God tells us to do something, we can't tell him that he needs to send someone else. That's not obeying. Now, have your parents or your grandparents or your teachers, have they ever told you to do something? Maybe pick up your toys, go brush your teeth, go change clothes, go put on your shoes. Have your parents ever told you to come inside or to go do something like unload the dishwasher, but you didn't want to do it? That's happened to me too. But just like Moses has to obey, we have to obey too. And we can't offer excuses like I'm too tired or I don't want to do that or make somebody else do that or you do that for me. That's not how we behave. Instead, we say, yes, ma'am, or yes, sir, and we always, always obey. Did you know that the Bible says that children are supposed to obey their parents? The Bible tells us that. And so if you want to obey God, then you obey your parents. That's a very important thing for us to do. And did you know that it's not just you that has to obey? I have to obey God. Your mommy, your daddy, your grandparents, the adults that you know, everybody has to obey God. It's very important. Even Moses had to obey God. First, he had to take off his shoes because it was holy ground. And then he had to go and do something he didn't want to do. He had to go back to Egypt because God had a special 
special job for him to do in Egypt. And it was very important that he listen and obey. And you and I need to do that same thing. Always listen and always obey. Before we go today, I want to sing one more song. And it's all about Moses and the burning bush. Moses, 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 and the burning bush. Moses, 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 and the burning bush. Moses, 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 and the burning bush. Moses, take your shoes off. Moses, take your shoes off. Because this is holy ground. Do you know that song? Now you do, and you can sing it. God told Moses to take off his shoes because it was holy ground. And it was holy because God was there speaking to Moses through this burning bush. And God, God is holy. And when we talk about God, we talk about God in a nice way. When we worship God, we're very serious and we sing and we pray because God is holy. God is special. And so we want to treat God in a very, very special way. But we always want to listen to God too. And since God tells us to obey our parents, that's what we want to do. We want to listen and obey. Now, it would be fun if God would give us sticks that we could throw on the ground and be snakes. But he doesn't do that for us today. But I bet you could probably play that game outside where you take a stick and throw it on the ground and pretend like it's a snake. That would be really, really fun to do. I'm so glad that you joined me for another lesson from the Bible. And next week, we're going to be talking about Moses again. Except we'll probably let Moses keep his shoes on next week. What do you think? But if you want to, you can take your shoes off anytime you want. If your parents say that's okay. But when your parents tell you to put your shoes back on, always obey. That's what we want to do. Thank you so much for being with us today, and I hope that you'll be back next time for our Bible lesson. Bye, everybody!